Hey everybody, so I'm back now from OC3 and from Immerse and Steam Dev Days, and a lot of you guys were asking me to give kind of a, a recap of uh, what happened over the last few weeks at all of those conferences. So I thought I'd just make a quick video here and kind of give my thoughts on on uh, what was important at those conferences and what happened down there. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's jump in there and get started. So first was OC3 in San Jose last week, and that was very very fun, very interesting. Um, you know, thanks to everybody for, you know, uh, a great event. And uh, I'll just go over some of the things that happened over there. All those videos are online now. I will put a link in the description below to the playlist on YouTube that Oculus has already published with basically the keynote and all the talks and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, I definitely check out a lot of those tech talks. I was going to go through a lot of the tech talks and give you my opinion and which ones you should check out. But there's a lot there. So I would say just go through that playlist and just watch the ones that are interesting for you. So the keynote, of course, was the biggest event. A uh, lot of interesting announcements made then. Nothing too surprising in some ways because we were all expecting, of course, to get a launch date for Touch, for example, and that's that's out now. So you can pre-order the Touch now, and I believe this ship date is December 6th. Price is $199. Not surprising. That's kind of what we all expected. Um, the third tracking cameras will be available too. That was, of course, something where a lot of devs were... Uh, a little bit disappointed if, to hear that because, you know, that kind of pushes the overall cost of ownership higher and, you know, it's kind of inconvenient for a lot of people to have now three tracking cameras, for example, and all the USB ports that you need for that. So that wasn't that well received by everybody, of course, uh, understandably, because it's uh, also fragmenting the market a little bit from the perspective of, you know, you've got, you know, your seated gamepad Oculus users who didn't buy Touch, then you've got the people who did buy Touch, and you've got people who bought Touch but also bought the third controller or the third camera. So a little bit more fragmentation there. For this generation of VR, which is concerning, of course, as a dev, you're not really sure how big the market size you can be targeting is. But um, by all reports, everything, you know, everyone was very happy with the touch demos. I, I also enjoyed a lot of the touch demos. Uh, in particular, I really had a lot of fun playing Robo Recall. Uh, that was really good. That was one of the hits for sure. And then uh, Super Hot was also a lot of fun because a lot of interesting gameplay mechanics there, of course, with the time dilation and that kind of thing. So. Definitely had a lot of fun with that. Um, also, Eagle Flight was really good. So uh, I was surprisingly good. That one was a seated gamepad experience and one that I kind of thought would make me a bit motion sick. But uh, I ran into a lot of people who said, hey, you have to try super, uh, You have to try Eagle Flight. It's really good. And I ended up playing it, I think, like three times or something like that, waiting in line and going back to play it. So it was really a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. I hope that that's one that's successful and there's a lot of multiplayer games open because uh, it was really good. Okay, so the keynote, um, yeah, so we had, you know, the touch pre-orders, um, there was, they showed off the standalone, the standalone VR headset, which is used the inside out tracking. None of us got to see that, some members of the press, you know, a lot of those, uh, the press and stuff like that got to see it and a lot of VIPs. Um, so it was there at the event, but it was only kind of invite only. And um, a lot of people who tried it said, yeah, it's very cool, um, you know, but it's definitely still uh, something that's an early prototype, you know, it's very fragile and and that kind of thing. So very cool to see that's in development, but we've already seen similar technology, of course. HoloLens uses a kind of similar idea, Project Tango, uh, the Project Alloy, I think it's called from Intel, right? That one also has kind of the inside out tracking. So cool to see Oculus working on that as well. Uh, another announcement that was interesting, of course, was the asynchronous space warp. And related to that, how that is gonna enable lower spec machines also to run Oculus at acceptable and comfortable levels. So that opens it up to like sort of 960 level GPUs that can then start being or Oculus ready. And they announced that there would be a $500 AMD spec machine that is Oculus ready. Um, that then the, I think the stats they gave us was that that should open up another 10 to 15 percent of the market. So, you know, that, that will enable another 10 to 15 percent of PC owners that are out there right now to jump into a VR headset. Um, the asynchronous space warp is going to allow the apps then to run at 45 frames per second. Um, again, like I, I wouldn't want to design my game with that constraint, but the idea being that, you know, you, you're going to target 90 and if you miss a couple frames, then the asynchronous space warp can compensate as in addition to the asynchronous time warp. And then the app will be running at 45 frame, 45 frames per second at that time. Now, I, yeah, like I said, I, I wouldn't really want to play a game that's running on those things at 45 all the time, but, um, I'm not sure if that's going to be possible. I, I believe from the talk that I went to about that technology, the intention, of course, is to cover up for the occasional missed frame, that kind of thing. So it's definitely useful, though, if there's the total loss, cost of ownership being dropped by, you know, another 500 US dollars kind of thing is uh, definitely noteworthy for developers. That's really good. 
Um, then the social integrations, of course, is uh, something I think we were all expecting to come at some point where we can kind of invite friends from Oculus Home into a game that should really help some of the multiplayer and social experience. It should help a lot of us find each other. And I'm uh, excited for that as well, because I think that'll help, you know, make there be a larger, more consistent multiplayer. As many of you probably also experienced, you'll jump into some games and there's no games going on. And of course you immediately bounce. And since you bounce, the next guy that comes in can't find a game either. And, um, you know, it makes it kind of hard to keep a game alive. So, uh, yeah, that's, I think also a very positive thing. Um, yeah, like I said, the keynotes online, you can check out all the other stuff that's, uh, that's was announced in there. A lot of really interesting things to think about and yeah, a lot moving on there. Um, what was also cool, Carmack was out there, you know, every day, I think he probably spent like 10 hours a day talking, you know, he was in the hallway whenever he wasn't giving a session, he was in the hallway, just, you know, answering questions and hanging out. And I think that's really cool. I was really impressed by his openness and stamina to, to, uh, stand out there and talk to everybody and be patient enough to answer everyone's questions. I'm sure it was multiple questions, you know, the same all the time, but really cool that he was, you know, he's that get willing to give his time and to work with everybody there. So, um, yeah, that was uh, really fun hanging out with him and chatting. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I also did an interview with Rob and Brian from Immersive. They have this uh, platform for monetization. You know, it's kind of like an ad network. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on there with their platform. Uh, but one of the things is an ad network that might help some developers monetize their apps. I think especially that's interesting for a lot of the mobile VR guys where, you know, you're looking at larger markets where people are less likely to buy premium applications. So cardboard, maybe daydream in the future when that gets launched, uh, gear VR, that kind of thing. So I did an interview with them. I'll, uh, I'll edit that and get that online as well. Uh, I think the audio might be a little bit bad there because we actually were out on the patio and uh, it turns out that the convention center is of course right underneath the airport. So uh, I'll do my best to clean that up and uh, we'll get that online for you. So yeah, that was OC3 in San Jose. That was uh, really good. Um, you know, I really met a lot of great people, had a great time. Uh, thanks to all the organizers and everybody I met, it was also great to meet some of you guys. You know, I met a, a bunch of people at the audience, uh, from the VR dev school audience, and it's really fun to meet up in person. So, uh, shout out to all you guys. And, uh, so then I headed up to Seattle and Bellevue and that was, uh, for Immerse and for Steam Dev Days. So Immerse was just a one day conference. It was, you know, general AR VR industry. So there was not just games and, and, you know, it was kind of everybody, um, it was uh, a good event. I actually picked up a, a cold at OC3, probably staying up too late and having too much fun. Uh, so I didn't stay there too long because I wasn't feeling too good. Um, I'm still kind of recovering from a cold, so sorry if my throat sounds a bit weird. Uh, but it was fun. It was uh, you know great to see a lot of people, uh, meet some new people. I'd like to give a shout out to Cognitive VR. You guys did really great there. They, uh, Cognitive VR is an analytics platform. I did an interview with them as well at, uh, at Immerse. So I'm going to get that online for you all as well. That's a VR analytics platform. So that's something that uh, a lot of developers can really use to help debug their apps, first of all, and also to get more statistics about users and everything. So it's very interesting. They had a Shark Tank style pitching session at Immerse and Vancouver's own Cognitive VR won that. So congrats, guys. That's great. Um, so I chatted with them, got an interview there. I also talked talk to the guys at Fove. So Fove is the headset that does the uh, eye tracking that enables foveated rendering. So they were showing off one of their headsets and prototypes, and it was very cool. Tracking, like headset tracking itself was more like DK2 style. And then the eye tracking tech is, you know, a bunch of IR lights, that kind of thing. They calibrate it to your eye, and then they run you through a couple demos. The first demo was a Space Marine sort of running at the hallway down towards you, and then you would look all around the scene at the Space Marine behind him and then notice how the scene is um, changing, like the rendering quality. So it's it was kind of, I mean, ideally in the future, you don't notice it, but they were kind of making it that you would notice it for the purposes of the demo so you could understand what it was doing and how that was working. So that was kind of cool to see that foveated rendering really taking shape and when working. Uh, they're focusing really on the eye tracking tech and like it'll be up to the engines, of course, to implement a lot of the uh, actual foveated rendering. So the, uh, that was cool. Then the second demo was a, you know, sort of a bunch of spaceships and you'd look at each one. And when you looked at it, you would shoot a laser and blow it up. And that's kind of cool. You don't you don't really move your head. You just kind of move your eyes and shoot things. So you kind of feel like Cyclops from X-Men or something like that. Um, definitely still like some issues with the headset, of course, like if you're uh, if, if the headset shifts on your face, it can lose the calibration that you had. So it'll be a little bit less accurate. 
Um, we chatted with uh, the guys about that a bit and they were saying that, yeah, that's, you know, these are all, they have solutions for all of these things. It's a matter of getting like a large enough database of, uh, they need a bunch of pixel, uh, pupil images and that kind of thing. And that can help build like a large enough database to improve that kind of tracking. So I guess it's what they're saying is it's kind of a problem that would be solved by machine learning, for example. So that was very cool. That is coming out. There's going to be dev kits, they said, available in December. So look out for that as well. If you're interested in doing something that involves a lot of eye tracking and jumping on you know, that new technology as it's coming up. Um, what else was cool at Immerse was Tactical Haptics. I got a demo from Tactical Haptics. That's a, it's kind of like a, a peripheral device that enhances the haptics of, uh, of, the head, of the controllers that are out there. And so what I mean by that is like it, you hold it in your, it's a separate device, you hold it in your hand and it does, it has these like different plates that kind of shear. So um, when you swing a sword, for example, you'd expect to feel the sword kind of twist in your hand a little bit and, you know, kind of pull on your skin. And the, this device has these plates in there that kind of shear against your skin and gives you a really much more strong feeling that there, uh, that there is something in your hand. So like it worked well with, uh, you know, guns, swords, bows. They use the, the um, NVIDIA Funhouse demo to show off the haptics. And then they have on the front of it for tracking, they have uh, a Vive controller attached to it. I think the idea being there that you could swap out for tracking, you use the, you know, the controller you already have, and then you use the, but you're holding onto the handle of this device and um, yeah, it enhances the experience. So yeah, that's definitely something really cool. If you get a chance to try that, definitely recommend that. Check that out. Um, so that was basically it for Immerse. And then the next day was, of course, Steam Dev Days. So Steam Dev Days is two days long. And um, yeah, it was a very, very good conference. Very different than Oculus Connect in a lot of ways because, it, for example, at Steam Dev Days, there's no press. It's just developers and people in the, you know, sort of Steam and Valve ecosystem. And uh, so it was really about meeting and connecting with people and uh, really you know, getting to build some strong connections when uh, also just a chance to meet people that, you know, you, you kind of knew them from online and then, you know, they're at that, that conference in a very kind of casual environment. So uh, a lot of great talks. Those are also going to be all online in the next few weeks, I guess, or hopefully in the next week or so. Um, so definitely check those out. There was a, really a lot of really um, he, like sort of technical discussions that were very interesting for developers like ourselves. So um, definitely check all those out as well. Um, as far as VR stuff goes, it was, of course, it's not specifically a VR conference, but there is, of course, a big focus on VR right now, and that's really great to see. So what was very cool there is the vision for the Lighthouse tracking technology and like open VR as like a sort of industry standard and, and standardizing like VR devices and peripherals. So, you know, track, tra uh, lighthouse tracking devices becoming something like Wi-Fi base stations, you know, where the, anybody can sort of, you know, you'll find these tracking stations and anybody can use them because they don't need to pair specifically perhaps with any, any particular device. So that was kind of a neat vision. Uh, the big news was, of course, the new controller prototypes. I didn't actually get a chance to try that because the lineups were quite long and it was just really the one evening that we had a chance to. So, um, but I did hang out there and watch a lot of people trying, uh, trying it out and uh, talk to a lot of people who did get a chance to try it. And everyone really loved it. They said it was really, really great. So it was, uh, you know, like the idea that it kind of straps your hand a little bit like something like this. And um, then you can fully open your hand and grab something. And when you want to let it go, you just kind of open your hand and you don't have to worry about a controller falling out of your hand. It's kind of sitting there in your hand like that all the time, strapped to the back of your wrist and that kind of thing. And that was really, really cool. Um, and I think that uh, really increased the immersion for a lot of people that you could really just let something go. And, you know, it was really more natural. And everyone said the tracking was good. Ergonomics were great. So that's very interesting. I like the idea where they're going in that direction where, you know, you could have potentially have these, you know, many peripheral devices kind of all working toward an open standard. So maybe you don't need to buy a new headset if you want those new controllers. You can just buy those controllers and then you can swap them out with your regular Vive controllers, right? So you're still using your Vive headset, but you've got these other controllers. And I think that that's where they're going. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I like the idea of having that sort of PC-like standard where, you know, all these devices can be mixed and matched. And uh, as a developer, of course, it makes it can make it a little bit more work, but it also depends on the standards and how they're set so that I could maybe write my application to one set of standards and that'll support a variety of VR devices. So that was very, very cool. 
uh, Valve was very generous with all of their uh, the swag at the event. We all got Steam controllers and Steam links. I've actually had those for a, a bit already, and so it was uh, cool to see that you know more people getting that and getting the, uh, their hands on that hardware. Um, they had a bunch eighteen Vive set up along one side of the on two sides of the room, and then they had on one wall a bunch of big screen TVs, uh, each one with its own Steam machine. You know, so a, a box running Steam OS from each of the Steam machine makers, and then you could just walk up and take your you know your new Vive or sorry your new Steam controller, and you could just pair that with whatever Steam machine and sit there and play Rocket League with some people and just relax. And that was very very cool. Um, so yeah, as far as the keynote goes, that was uh, very interesting as well. I really like the way that Valve does their keynote, and you really feel like you're part of a community there. Um, so yeah, if you get a chance to ever go to the Steam Dev Days, I would definitely do it. Um, OC3 and Steam Dev Days are invite only, but I found you know they're they're pretty open to those kind of things. If you're working on a project that's related to VR, you can just email and get an invite for next year or something like that. And uh, I would highly recommend going to those. Really great to again to meet everybody and have a good time there. Um, so what else uh, Steam Dev Days? I think that's about it that uh, I want to mention there. Um, those talks will be online. I definitely would recommend checking out those talks specifically. Uh, if there's anything in those talks that I really want to share with the rest of the VR Dev School audience, I will, of course, bring that up in the mailing list or in a lesson somewhere. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Next up is a full indie summit here in Vancouver. That's an indie game summit that's happening in the, at the end of October. And then uh, I know CVR, which is like uh, a consumer VR expo run by Archiac here in Vancouver. That was also the next iteration of that was announced. I believe that's this spring. So that'll be also very fun. But, you know, tons of VR events also coming up in the States. And uh, but I think for now, for me, that was enough traveling. That was a lot of fun. But now it's time to get back to work, making videos, working on Endspace. And uh, yeah, so I hope that was helpful for you guys. And I'm going to get back to work and I'll see you guys later.